Hi, I'm Will Summers, and this is podcast number three of my New England surfing history. It's about the Hobie Hearse. Actually, it was a 1938 uh, surfing Cadillac surfing hearse. But uh, this is Will Summers again. This is my number three uh, episode from the Odyssey of Narragansett Surf Shops, the Hobie Shops. And there's always been a great deal of interest in the Hobie hearse. So I thought it would be particularly useful for me to tell you the story of that and how we ended up with it and uh, what we did with it over the years. So when I first up to, came up to New England, uh, what I had was a MG Midget, which was so small that my board sticking out the back was bigger than the rest of the car, um, and ended up running that into the ground. So uh, used my wife's Volkswagen for a while. Uh, remember taking that down to show a movie down in Fall River. I think it was The Endless Summer, and uh, coming home on Route 24 and, and having absolutely no remembrance of how I got there. I think the car steered itself. I was so tired. Another time, Freddie Silton and I went down to uh, Rhode Island from Boston and uh, took our boards on the car. And, of course, uh, we had an old homemade wood rack of his, and then it exploded. The boards flew off, and that was uh, another need for new boards. But uh, finally, uh, the summer of 1965, um, I was driving out to the uh, shop we'd opened up in Hyannis, and... Uh, driving through Bourne at the foot of the Cape, and there was a 1938 uh, black hearse sitting on the side of the road. And of course, you stop and you ask the guys, uh, you want to sell that? And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. So we, we bought I think we bought it for a couple hundred bucks, uh, you know, always looking for a bargain. And uh, took it, uh, had it painted up, uh, the Hobie hearse, which is a very bad pun, and, of course, Narragansett Surf Shops on the side and a couple of the addresses and stuff, I think. So uh, we brought it back home, showed the team. They were all for it. Um, drove it out to Hull. And remember the first time we came there, and everybody just flocked around it, really loved it. Um, and a girl named Linda Giroux, who I've seen mentioned in some of the things, I don't know if we found her uh, for the reunion, uh, really was so enthusiastic about it, she asked if she could buy one of the purple tassels that had fallen off the window. And that's when we knew that we had something uh, interesting to people. Uh, used it to deliver boards. I remember driving all around the Boston area, delivering boards in Situate and Hingham and up um, North Shore and Melrose, and everybody kind of looking at this thing and saying, what is that? Um, we also took it with a team to contests. It was a great thing to do that with. And also, as I mentioned in my earlier episode, uh, took it out on the Cape. Uh, remember the whole team going out there. We took skateboard blanks and put fins on them and used them for surfing down the dunes. Uh, some people are doing that now, I guess, sand surfing, uh, sort of a primitive snowboarding. And uh, took it up to New Hampshire and Maine. And uh, the other thing I remember doing with it was uh, a couple things. One was uh, taking it to the Harvard parking lot, and, and you know people just looked at it and just broke out laughing. But uh, it was fun, and great to drive around in. Uh, and we also used it to carry huge numbers of boards in. I remember going up to uh, Providence, um, to uh, rather Hartford, Connecticut, because we couldn't get the boards brought into Boston or into Providence. We'd have to go up to Hartford to pick them up for both the uh, Hull shop and the. Rhode Island shops, and coming back with 26 boards, uh, uh, you know, on top of it and in it and just everywhere. So that was uh, one way to save a couple of dollars, too, was to go up and do that. Um, then the the kind of the next thing you remember was how much fun it was. And uh, we'd have a bunch of surfers, surf team guys and girls in the back, and only problem we had was one night they were fooling around back there, as they often did, and I was the certified adult, but, you know, everybody had a good time. And Mike Tobin, I called him Paul in the earlier one, but I, I, his name is Mike Tobin from Rhode Island, kicked the back door open, and my tools, my toolbox, which was key to building shops and things like that, ended up all over the road. We never found those tools. It was kind of a, kind of a disaster. Um, so anyway, 
Uh, we had the hearse for at least a couple of years. It was really uh, a very special thing. I always thought that uh, the Harvard professors took pity on me because of driving around and something like that. And maybe that's why we got some decent grades. So at least he's trying. But it certainly was a great advertisement. Um, and I think it, it went a long way to kind of bring us through uh, unifying the shops, bringing them all together because it was such a such a good thing. Uh, Rip Amantia said he remembers going on a ride with that, and, and I, I think that's really true. We did try to take kids on it and take them around in it. I, I know they got a kick out of that and put their boards on, and we take the boards and go down and surf for Egypt Beach and Situate and Second Cliffs, Peggotty Beach. That was a great place. I remember surfing there one winter. Um, it was February, and we'd just come back from California, a bunch of us, particularly I'd been out there for a couple of weeks, and taken off in big surf. In, in the middle of the winter, and everybody thinking we weren't going to make it, and uh, we got through it, full suit, boots and gloves. I know many of you have been through the same experience. I'm going to do a separate piece on surf music uh, and on the associations and the you know United States Surfing Association and the Eastern Surfing Association a little bit on some of the publicity and things that we did so um, I just say I've got you know probably every record the Beach Boys ever made and every record Jan and Dean ever made so I think the one thing I want to leave on this story uh, about cars and and uh, hearse and that is What's great is that it sticks with you. You remember it. You remember the fun you had. And the best thing of all is that we're all still surfing, and a lot of us are. So God bless you all. Uh, stick with it. And I'm going to end up with a, a Beach Boys piece. Uh, it's a little later. As I said, I'll do the second, a lot of the cuts in, in, in the early one later on. But this one's a Beach Boys piece called Till I Die, and, and I think we're just all going to keep going. Let's keep doing it.